my fellow Mandalorians, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for watching. Really excited to get started with episode 5 and talk all about it. I'm going to talk about some key features that I thought were important in the episode and cool stuff as well, just to make sure that we keep this episode a little short in the review. So, all right, before we get started, I want to make sure that you've watched the episode already. So, if you haven't watched it yet, Take your time, watch the episode first, and then come back and watch this again. So, let's get started. First, we open the episode with the space battles, which is such a great thing about the show is that I always felt like I was watching a movie. Every episode feels like I'm watching a movie, and I always can't wait for the, the next few minutes. This past episode was actually too, too fast. I felt that it was really short, at least how I felt. I don't think in actual time it was long. Anyways, going to the space battle. So, the space battle was really cool effects. You got a bounty hunter trying to chase... Uh, the man going down and is shooting his ship and he is basically <laughs> pulling some maneuvers and stuff like that I thought it was kind of funny that the Mandalorian decided to do a type of uh, Top Gun type of skill and if you're not familiar with Top Gun I don't know where have you been so you know when he jerks the the controls back and he lets the guy fly past him and then he shoots the the bounty hunter so I thought it was kind of funny that they're introducing that type of thing in the movie Tom, uh, Top Gun is coming around the corner, so I thought it was kind of funny. So they're getting into that, and once I saw the planet, I was wondering if that was Tatooine. And once Mando was calling in for permission to land, and it says Mos Eisley, I was like, oh my god, thank god they're bringing Tatooine to the episode. Because obviously we know Tat Tatooine is a really important role in the Star Wars saga. So I thought it was really cool that they were introducing it into the show. Hopefully that continues on maybe in the future. I don't know, but I'm, I'm hoping they do that going forward. It was really cool that they were able to do it to the same, it looks like the same spaceport that the Millennium Falcon was landing when Han Solo was landing his ship. So it looks kind of similar, but I'm not really sure. Either or, I was really excited for this to happen. But I didn't like is the, the kind of the storyline for this episode, which kind of just didn't have a meaning behind it. Only thing that had meaning is that he's trying to get money to do repairs and survive and things like that. So it shows the struggles of, of surviving on the run. And I thought that was the interesting part of the show or the episode. But I didn't like the, the storyline too much. You know, you, you get into Mando going into a cantina. It was just the same cantina that, you know, Luke Skywalker went in there with Han Solo. At least it looks like it. And he finds a, a rookie bounty hunter who's just trying to get into the guild. Who has no idea what Mon, uh, Mando has done and what he's done to the guild itself. So he has no idea and offers to give the Mandalorian a job to get... A bounty and I couldn't tell from the puck who it was until later on in the episode but I, just the storyline of having to train new rookie I just didn't like it I thought it was kind of you know beneath them and they could have done better on this episode but I guess to a way to introduce the new character and maybe this new actress going forward in other episodes so once the rookie and the Mandalorian make an agreement for their bounty itself and where they're going to meet up. They get it on these speeders, which is cool. I like speed speeders, and speeders are really awesome. It has a real nostalgia to the Star Wars saga. But what I didn't like is the fact that when they were showing this, it was kind of, you could see the effects kind of standing out, and that's where the limitations of the, the show, I guess, may stand. So I didn't like that aspect of the show because of the fact that I can't, that I didn't feel pulled in like the space battle i felt pulled in i felt that it was you could tell the difference but the speeder not their best work at least in my opinion so i i thought that part of this of the show or the episode was the one thing they could improve on going forward but it was interesting how they use the speeder to to talk about the wildlife the natives kind of introducing new the characters that we've known in episode four and that are with sand people and they communicate through sign language and things like that so i thought it was really cool to bring new viewers or new ages into this show to understand what those characters were like and what they're supposed to be like in the real world so to speak of star wars so i, I like the fact that they're introducing them they didn't spend too much time with it but they also didn't spend a short time with them either so i thought it was a good balance between those characters and uh, once we got into a little bit further in the episode and we get to introduce 
the bounty who obviously has an amazing amazing accuracy of shooting with a long range rifle i thought it was really cool that they tried to do some little tricks and they're doing flash grenades kind of thing where they blinding her in the middle of the night and having a little race to get to her so once they get to see her obviously i did at this point i couldn't really remember or what that person looked like and again that little puck didn't really show it very clearly to me at least so i couldn't tell who it was but the moment she took off her helmet in that scene i realized it was ming Man. i pronounced the name wrong and i'm sorry so much for that and we all know her as you know part of the agents of shield so i really am happy that to see her in a tv show again i really liked her, her as a character and as an actress in that show as well as other shows so i really 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 liked to see her in more episodes with star wars and i hope they do and uh, once we get to a little bit more towards the end, uh, we'll talk about more about it. But the fight scene between her and the rookie bounty hunter was really cool. She, that's the type of work that I've seen her use in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I was really happy that they brought that type of martial arts into this show to show the fighting style, what she has and what other characters have the ability of doing so. That is one of the coolest things of, or coolest ways to introduce for this actor's caliber. So once they get into the next scene where they're talking about, you know, how we're going to transport Ming now to the spaceport and things of that sort. She actually shows like a lot of her intelligence in this scene to show that this rookie has no clue what he's doing. He's not really the brightest, you know, crayon in the box, so to speak. He is playing into the, the mind games of, of her saying that he is the one who basically destroyed the guild and betrayed them as a traitor and is probably more sought out than anyone or even her. So it was cool to see that character ruthless and type of manipulating and show that this this guy was not going to be lasting very long and it showed that towards the end of the uh, episode. And once he, he kills or supposedly kills uh, Ming Nao's character, you know, you see her lying on the ground, Mandalorian thinks that she's dead and he goes to the spaceport. We also find that the spaceport is the rookie bounty hunter who is with the baby Yoda and the repairman and is also trying to, you know, bring him in to gain his ac access to the guild. But obviously he's a rookie. He doesn't know how experienced bounty hunters act and he gets himself killed. So it was a way of showing that, you know, this character is not going to last long, which is another reason why I didn't like the fact that, that they brought this type of storyline. It was, to me, again, it wasn't the best episode they could bring up. And so far, it's my least favorite episode of the entire season because of this one character that I just never gravitated to. He may be a great actor or whatnot, but it's not, that's not the purpose. So, but once we find that the Mandalorian gets his, gets his ship, gets Baby Yoda, and they, they leave, we come to the end of the episode where we're coming up to Ming's body, and supposedly she's dead, but someone is there to pick her up. Now, based on the sound of the armor, I think it's the Mandalorian, but again, I'm not really sure, and it may be some other bounty hunter, like a partner that she has, because of the title of the of the episode is called Gunslinger, so I figured that there was probably another person that is with her, and... That's the reason why that we see that character. But we don't see much, we only see a feat. So I couldn't tell if it was the Mandalorian or another bounty hunter. So I really hope that she's alive and that she is in part of other episodes. So that way we can have more action sequences like that did, like we did earlier that episode. All right guys, so that's all I have for today. Wasn't much to talk about because I didn't really find any big things of this episode. I really found a lot of negatives, things I didn't like. And it sucks to say that this episode, if I was to rank it, is probably like number 5 out of 10. Because it was just not only the effects that I saw with the speeder, but the introducing of this new rookie bounty hunter that obviously he died. I just didn't like the whole storyline behind it. I like the fact that they brought, you know, Moss Eisley into the whole thing. And we had that space battle in the beginning of the episode. We got Ming... Ming Na Wan, again, I'm sorry for pronouncing your name wrong, and uh, I really like that aspect, but I didn't like anything about this episode, so thanks very much for guys for watching, I really appreciate you taking the time, please stay tuned for any new episodes that are going to be coming out in the future, and I hope to see you guys soon, see you later, have a nice day.